So we've tried melting gold once before to get some practice and I've been able to melt together not only pieces of gold that I've been able to pan out but also pieces of scrap jewelry that I've melted down and that's why this scrap has sort of a coppery tinge to it is because one of the old rings I had that I melted uh, was rose gold so this isn't this does have a little bit of copper in it, but it is gold, and we are going to weigh it here real quick, see what we get this, in terms of weight. Make sure we don't lose any when we melt it. We want to get out as much as we put in, if at all possible. So real quick, before we get the furnace going, I wanted to show you the crucible that goes into the furnace. This crucible here is made out of graphite, I believe and in the bottom if you can see that shiny material that's melted borax and you use that to season the crucible so that the gold doesn't stick to it and helps the gold stick to itself and helps you get it out um, and refine it a little bit so I'm still learning about this process of how to melt and refine gold <clears throat> but so far I really like using borax because it's a very straightforward process and it doesn't involve harsh chemicals such as mercury or cyanide um, that are dangerous and uh, environmentally impactful. So borax is something that you use around the house and I'm pretty comfortable with that. So I wanted to show you the inside of the crucible before we add gold and before we start to heat it up. And you can also notice that the crucibles degrade over time. You can see like pitting and stuff inside it. So they don't last forever. Um, this has only been used once before and it's already showing signs of, of degradation. I thought that was very interesting. I didn't know that that happened, but it looks like you do have to replace crucibles pretty regularly. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the furnace and we'll go from there. Furnace is, the furnace is plugged in. The fan has come on, so I'm going to turn the on switch. Turn it on, and then I'm going to set the temperature. The crucible is inside, and we will set the temperature and then close that lid. Okay, so to help myself out, I've left myself notes <laughs> written on tape on my little cart here. And as you can see, this furnace has a maximum temperature of 2100 degrees Fahrenheit or 1150 degrees Celsius. I've also noted that the display is in Fahrenheit. So I will leave a link in the description to this furnace. Uh, I got it on Amazon, but I'm mentioning it because I used a cheaper furnace and the instructions were very vague which is a problem um, because simple things like knowing if the display is in Celsius or Fahrenheit makes a big difference when you're trying to reach specific temperatures for specific metals. My first furnace didn't have that and it actually burned out within two uses and I had to return it. So this one uh, does have the display in Fahrenheit. It's important to know that and identify that before you begin using it and then it's also handy to know target temperatures for the things you're trying to melt and so that's why I left myself for gold that little note there so in the meantime it's heating up you can see on the display here that the temperature is rising that is in Fahrenheit and we will check in in a little while to see how it comes along and by the way, this is an electric furnace, so there are other kinds that you could use, such as propane. But I felt, because this is such a safety thing, this was a good place for me to start. And when I do a melt, it will usually be on the weekend when electricity rates are lowest, because this thing does draw a lot of power. So eventually, we may move to something that doesn't quite take as much electricity but I'm hoping our solar panels are going to contribute to this and hustle and this is how we're going to start with electric.
So through the magic of video, here we are, 25 minutes has elapsed and our temperature is about 1850 degrees Fahrenheit and climbing, and climbing, so we're getting there. Um, I set it to about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 50 degrees above the melting point of gold and that's because I want the gold to be more than just barely melted. Uh, I've done this before and I set it basically just a couple degrees above the melting point and it was still, it did melt but it didn't flow well. There could be other reasons for that but this time around I'm going to set the temperature generously above the melting point so that we can see if we can get it to be a little more viscous. Now what we're going to do now, even before it's reached its maximum temperature, is we're going to add a little bit more borax to the crucible and that's just to keep again the, the gold from sticking to the crucible so I can get it back out and also it will suck out any impurities that might still be in the gold. So I'm going to take some first things first, I'm going to lift the lid we'll take a look and see what's inside. Woo! That baby's hot! Look at that! Oh yeah. Alright well here's safety time. So we're going to take a quick peek in there and I'm going to sp sprinkle carefully borax, which fizzes. And then I'm going to close the lid again and let it continue to heat. And then I'm also going to blow the borax away from that rim. Okay, we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so the temperature is up to 2016 degrees Fahrenheit plus. Now is the time to add the gold. I've seasoned the crucible with borax and it is rocket hot in there, okay? So definitely safety, 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 you guys. I've put on gloves to protect my hands from the heat. This is so dangerous. In fact, I don't recommend you do this at home and kids don't do this by yourself. Just be very careful and I'm gonna be careful too. Always safety first. So I've got gloves on to protect myself from the heat and I'm going to drop this in and then add a little borax on top. Okay, so there it goes. And then we've already talked about the borax so I'm going to, I can't film and put it in there at the same time so I'm going to go ahead and just do it off camera and then we will circle back once we start to see some action with the gold melting. Alright, temperature is holding steady at 2019 degrees Fahrenheit. I've just added borax in on top of the gold and that, if you can see down in there, is how it looks when it's all melting. So we're going to let it get good and hot and sort itself out. Close the lid and come back in a little bit. Okay, so this is the melt so far. Now normally at this stage what I would do is take the crucible out with tongs and pour it into an ingot and let it cool. The trouble I've experienced with that though in the past is that it doesn't pour well, you lose material and it splashes into the ingot. I think I just don't know how to do it right yet or don't have enough information. So until I learn a better way to do it, I'm going to experiment this time and I'm just going to turn the machine off and let it cool and solidify. And the idea being that the gold, which is attracted to itself, will clump together, grains and all, and the borax, the flux, will be able to be chipped off when it's done and it will all come out of the crucible. So we will see in the end what it looks like. I'm just going to turn it off and let it cool for a long time. And then we'll check out the final product. So it's turned off right now but looking at hot lava is cool so let's just see if we can spend a few minutes to see what's going on in this crucible man. It's like the inside of a volcano in there. So cool.
And I don't know what those little black specks are. If they're gold or some other impurity. But I think what's boiling is the borax right now and those little black dots that are writing on top maybe like I say gold or something else that's separated out. But this is all part of the learning process so that's why we are practicing. It's like a volcano at home. Well, take two. I had trouble getting the gold out of the crucible again. It's stuck. And then when I did try to get it out, I had to heat it back up and remelt it and then pour it. But then it just splattered into the water. And I was right back where I started with a bunch of fragmented, twisted gold metal and slag. So we're going to try a different technique now. I'm going to take this graphite little coin form, I'm going to put that in the crucible and melt gold on top of it, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so there it is, bubbling away in the mold. So I'm going to slowly reduce the temperature again. Let's see if this works. Remember, it's in that little graphite form, so we'll see if we can get like a little coin or something. I really want it all to be collected though in one shape so that I don't have to manage a bunch of tiny little pieces of gold shrapnel that can easily get lost. And that would be a shame after all the hard work we've gone through and energy we've spent to get it refined. All right, we'll cool it down and see what happens. So this time I've taken the crucible out of the furnace and just let it sit in the air and there's the little bead congealing and cooling in its form. I'm just gonna let it cool on its own here for several minutes and go do other things while, while we check. Well, it worked, ish. It did pull all the gold together in a neat little blob in that form. That I'm happy about. But the form stuck in the crucible, so I had to sort of dig this out and quench it in hot water. Additionally, uh, it needs to be cleaned up. I did sort of try to get leftover slag off it so you could see the color. But I am certain I have introduced all kinds of impurities into this gold. Um, that's okay though. I, I'm just learning and it's my first time. This is what the back looks like. So I'm okay with that. And this is going to be part of a piece of jewelry for a friend, so it's okay. Um, we'll get better as we, we practice. All right, I'm going to do a weigh-in and we'll see uh, what gold we lost. I know we have lost some because when we made our first mistake and poured it out and um, it, it went into shrapnel, like there's still some pieces left in the pan of gold that was embedded in splashes of, um, of borax. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna weigh this and we'll see how bad it is. And then at a later time, I will go ahead and try to recapture the little pieces that are left uh, once again. Here's the way in. Oof. Okay, that's a whole gram. Well, is what it is. And we have a nice little button. And we can do it again at a later time and, and add more little pieces to it because now we have a technique for at least getting it into a blob. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learning with me on how to melt gold and joining in on the adventure. And uh, stay tuned if you want some more exciting adventures uh, in sustainability here at Suburban Stone Age. Leave me a comment if you have any questions or you'd like to know more about what we're doing. 
and stay tuned for for more videos guys thanks for joining have fun we'll talk to you soon